Hey Bunker Labs, welcome to another All In interview. Today I am with Tiffany Wandro. Welcome, how are you Tiffany? Thank you for having me today, I appreciate it so much. I'm wonderful. So thanks for taking the time out from your busy schedule and from your business um, in helping us out and providing some advice for entrepreneurs. But first Absolutely. Tiffany, just give us a little bit of an introduction to yourself and your military affiliation um, and about your business. Thanks so much. So. I'm Tiffany Wandro. I'm the owner, um, co-owner, and president of CNR Services. We are a commercial and residential painting company. If we, if it's painting inside out, we can do it. Um, I got into this business in 2008 full time with my husband, who started in 2001. Uh, we were both formerly in property management of commercial real estate buildings. Um, I was a property manager and so I made sure the buildings, you know, were running properly and all that and meeting with tenants. My husband, a different company, was a maintenance engineer. So he was the one that was fixing all the things or calling the people to fix things. So um, an opportunity happened for him to be able to start doing some painting on the side. And that side job became this business. Uh, in 2001, he became a DBA. And then in 2005, we incorporated, became CNR Services, which made me the majority owner and um, veteran owned. So um, we've been in business since 2001, going hardcore. Uh, 2008, I took over and left my full-time career to do this full-time. And um, I love it every day. I live, work, play with my best friend, soulmate, husband. Uh, so that's also another step of owning a business is that I'm with my partner every day. Um, so, so that's another aspect of what I do also. Um, and then I'm a, I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. I went into boot camp in November of 1991, where I was the guide responsible for the platoon and um, graduated and went right into my occupational school, which was admin. Back then there wasn't a whole lot for us women in the Marine Corps to do. So um, I was one of many pencil pushers, as we called ourselves. And I got out in 2005 after I was in Okinawa, came to Nashville with my at that time husband. And um, that ended and life sent me on a different route. But I've been in Nashville since 1995. I'm originally from New Orleans, if you can't tell that accent. New Orleans. <laughs> yep. And I just got back from Mardi Gras, where I was with eight of my Marine Corps sisters from boot camp. And next year, we'll be celebrating our 30th anniversary. So that's pretty much who I, who I am, other than I have two sons and two dogs and two cats. <laughs> that's awesome. And I also Thank love you. the reference to being able to run a business and live, work, play with your partner, also your husband. I do have a feeling that you could provide a lot of help in the work-life balance department as well, um, especially what we're going through right now. Yes. This is what I want to ask you about, which is, you know, in your business, painting, going into people's homes or businesses um, to paint, you know, how are you responding to COVID-19? What has changed about your business and how you're providing services or are you offering different things now? Well, I'll back up with just a little bit, which is to say the very first thing we decided when all of this started happening was that we were not going to lay anybody off. We were not going to furlough anybody and we were not going to cut back hours unless absolutely necessary. So I think that that was the full commitment to be all in, if you would say. And um, I'm also a gambler. So <laughs> we say all in a lot, but um, that was one of our first commitments was as a team, how much work do we have on the books? How much do we see coming up? And what do we need to do to diversify? Um, honestly, before all this even broke out, we were looking at trying to find another revenue stream in our business. And we came across an amazing company in Minnesota that for 30 years has been doing specialty ceiling tile cleaning. And so as a painting company, we're always asked about painting ceiling grid or painting ceiling tiles, things like that. So this was a great avenue that we were gonna open up for revenue. Well, in that meeting, we found out that one of the things that they actually provide is a um, heavy duty disinfectant that does, um, is certified with the EPA to clean 
disinfect for COVID, and Corona, um, SARS, all, all of that stuff. And so when we came back, the first thing that my right-hand man, his name is Jeff Stevens, he's been with us for five years, Air Force um, veteran, fire dog, firefighter. And um, when he came back and this really kicked off, we were like, wow, how amazing that we were already looking for this and now it's in our lap. So the biggest thing I feel was that we made the commitment not to let anybody go, furlough anybody. We then already were looking at another revenue stream, which included this disinfecting process and dealing tiles. And then we also are very diverse in the fact that not only do we do commercial office buildings, but we do hospitals, retail, um, industrial, warehouses, um, the gamut, and residential. Uh, we don't really go into a lot of residential anymore because it's hard for us as a corporation to compete with a lot of the single painters that are out there still. So uh, residential for us is usually more like White House of Tennessee, the governor's mansion, and um, a lot of restaurants, we do those also. So we're kind of diverse already. That happened back in 2008 in our first recession we had. Mm -hmm. um, and we diversified then and we also started looking at how do we make really long-term lasting relationships? And that's been something that we focus on a lot in our business. Um, I'm in four networking groups. So as you can imagine, that keeps you up to date with a lot of people anyway. And we've turned to a lot of them and just said, there's probably nothing being done in your building right now, but what can we do as soon as the building's ready to open? And we've gotten a lot of calls about doing the disinfecting. We actually have our first disinfecting job today. And it's a lot of what you're seeing other people doing with the foggers where it's a single ply of um, disinfectant that lays everywhere. And then as it dries, you're disinfected. So we've got that first job today, super excited about that. And then um, it's just right now really truly about relationships. I believe people are talking to each other more than we ever have. We feel that um, there's been a lot of our customers that are kind of just short quick talks or short emails. Those are the ones that we're spending 30 and 40 minutes with on the phone now because I believe we do all need that human companionship that we're missing as much as this the technology helps. It's not the same still as just having good conversations. And of course we can't physically do a lot of the touching we used to do. A big hugger, that's the hardest part for me is when I walk in a room or I see people I know do the chicken wing, you know, so. <laughs> That's, I believe that that's been so much of our success right now, why we're still going at it. We're slow, but we're steady. And that's the most important thing right now. Well, I think that's really interesting. You know, a couple points about that. One is just reiterating the relationships and how important those relationships are for entrepreneurs for the long term and always um, while yes. building a business and while maintaining a business. The other thing is that, you know, thinking forward, to diversification of revenue streams, you know, uh, prior to, during, and, and after uh, crises, um, external, you know, crises for sure. Um, you know, and, and another point that you made of just, you know, going through crisis before, like the recession, and what that looked like, and then making those decisions based on those experiences yes. for your business forward, like not laying people off, not furloughing your employees, um, which I think is just testament to you know the experience and advisement that you've gained you know over the years of owning the business um so advice for other entrepreneurs uh first let's talk about what would you tell entrepreneurs to keep doing in their businesses well what i would tell them that if they keep doing things the same way that they've been doing it they're going to wind up working with someone at, for someone else again and um so i know it's kind of like a double negative, I think is how you'd say that. But I do believe that as much people talk about constantly revisiting their company and, you know, what do we need to move forward? I mean, I'm a painting company. So people think we paint. There's so much more that we do, not just painting. Um, but whenever we're looking at what's the future entail, I mean, we're looking at some of the most state of the art equipment that's coming out of the manufacturers make painting easier. We look at that kind of stuff. We look at 
all of our paint suppliers and what they can give us. You know, is there a better, quicker, faster way to do anything nowadays? I hate to say it, but we're still kind of old fashioned. Our guys paint, we don't just spray everything. So where there's some, you know, more modern equipment out there, we're looking at that. We're always looking at, um, well, let me back up one thing too. I'll tell you this, we work with a diversified group of people. We are probably 60% general contractors. And that's got contractors from couple guys still working out the back of their truck to billion dollar contractors. So that's one thing you have to look at is how do you want your clientele to be? The other 40% of our clientele make up of property managers and facility managers. So we decided a long time ago, we weren't just going to work with one group of people. And there's a lot of companies out there go, okay, look, we're, we're painters. Let's stick with general contractors or we're painters. So let's stick with property managers. Uh, we found that back in 2008, back in 2010 and 12, the more we stayed diversified with our clientele, the more it helped us grow and even think outside of the box sometimes. Um, we've installed products that we never would have been, been interested in. Luckily, our client trusted us and knew we could do things and said, hey, can you do this? We'd look into it. If we could, yes. If not, we'd be like, no, but this is who you should talk to. And so our clients also look at us for a lot of um, our professional advice because of being a property manager and facility manager for so many years, my husband being in what he does. So um, we just kind of tell people, if you're going to keep sticking to what you're doing, you're going to be like a dinosaur. You're going to become extinct. I love that. I like that comparison. Uh, always good to bring in the dinosaurs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so, you know, the opposite of that, right, what would be your advice? And, and it sounds like, you know, you figured this out from going through 2008 and, and other, you know, external uh, crises that are out of your control. What do you tell entrepreneurs to stop doing in their business, to stop prioritizing? Well, I, what I like to tell owners, and I always confuse this phrase, you need to work on your business, not in your business. I think I, I, think I always reverse that because... Either way, there's a big difference of understanding. When you're an entrepreneur, we wear many hats. We are everything from HR, IT, to you know the person that stocks the bathrooms, to clean in the bathrooms. And um, there's a point when, as an owner, you have to say, I can't keep doing that. Like me, as an owner, constantly try to hunt down my clients to give me my money. That's not what I'm best at. So I hire people that truly are great at what they do, let them do what they need to do while I focus on what I need to do. And we went through a couple of years of some bad hires, which taught us a lot of lessons. And we turned to our team, the team that I feel right now is the A team. And we said to them, hey, we know the last couple of years were rough. What could we do differently? Our team was the one that was saying, Maybe in your interview process, you should ask this question. Or you know, maybe after they're here for three months, sit down and do a, you know, are you happy? What could we change? What could we have done different? Um, when we send out things to our clients, we're always wanting to know, even though we've done 10 jobs for you maybe as a client, every time we're done, we send you a survey. It's only five questions. But we want to know that every job went great for you and what can we do to change that or fix it? And there's times when I've had some of my favorite clients come back and say, hey, this, this and this was great, but maybe this needs to be fixed. And we learn from that. So our team has helped us, our clients have helped us. So you have to stop thinking you have to do it all yourself. And truly turn to the people that are helping you be successful and get information from them. Absolutely. And I love reiterating that from a lot of other entrepreneurs that we've heard from in this all in campaign about not having to do it yourself. Um, you know, and it's good to hear that from so many different industries from all industries, really. Um, so lastly, your mm -hmm. advice and, and you have spoken about, you know, just taking the plunge of diversifying your services of going ahead and, you know, pulling the trigger, so to speak on that. So what would you tell other entrepreneurs to start doing right now that they can create these, you know, opportunities for their business? Well, absolutely. They need to start diversifying their company. They need to start diversifying their clientele. And um, 
develop long-term relationships with them. I can't tell you how many clients that we have decided to stop working with. As an entrepreneur, I don't think that we do that often enough. We say, hey, this client was great for this time frame. They've changed or we've changed. It's okay to sit down and have that conversation. Part of that, ending that relationship, you never know when you're going to work together again. This is a small town and we're real estate still is very small in my opinion. Um, they don't say to these clients, listen, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> Break, breakup thing. It's not you, it's me. Um, I truly believe that you got to know when to walk away from a client that just isn't beneficial for both of you. And the ones that do have your same mentality, long-term goals, those are the ones you need to team up with. And I can tell you right now, people that we're talking to on a daily basis that says right now, hey, Tiff, I need this and this done, but you know my situation. What can we do to work this out together? We sit down and we come up with a plan, you know, because we want our clients to know, yes, we're all in business to make money, but we also understand that right now money is not there for a lot of people. Is it going to be there? Absolutely. So we've been able to go and do some things for our clients, you know, based on contract, you know, you have to do that. You've got to get everything in writing. We've been able to go out and help some clients that right now, otherwise, would not be able to be doing some of the things that they need to do to keep their businesses running. So I think that's important is to have the long-term relationships. It's okay to break up sometimes. It's okay. And then also diversify and just open your mind to thinking, okay, yeah, we've been doing, we've been making widgets for six years. Maybe we need to go look at doing something else with those, making a different kind of widget or adding a different service. And um, the, the reality is for us, entrepreneurs. There's a lot of self-help. There's a lot of these kind of things, but there's not a specific written book for like my industry. We've had to go to a lot of hard lessons, but I think that's every entrepreneur and you're going to go through the hard times, but if you continue doing things the same way, you'll become extinct. If you look at the hard times that you've been through and you learn from that and you go, how can we do this a little bit different next time? you're going to be successful and your people are going to believe in you and your clients are going to come to you. That's great. I love that last point too of, you you. know, of when people will come to you and also those relationships and how you can rethink those relationships too, or that work uh, process. Well, Tiffany, thank you so much for joining us for all in. Thank you for being one of our veteran entrepreneurs. That's also willing to offer all of your advice uh, from past uh, experience, you know, to our new entrepreneurs, as well as our ones that are trying to maintain through the crisis. And please let us know anything we can do to help you. Absolutely. And I'm here if anybody needs anything, because, you know, we're all in this together. Absolutely.